What's up, Wanders? Just bringing you a, a short video here on how to use the XOR gate for Fallout 4's settlement workshop. This is an interesting gate for, let's say, a scenario where you want to build a decontamination chamber. Uh, you want both doors to open, you want your decontamination arches to turn on when you open those doors. Uh, this is just going to be a, a quick little tutorial on how to make one of these function. I've looked at a lot of videos on YouTube um, trying to see if there was any you know, detailed explanations as how to use some of these. People have put together decontamination arches that are just triggered by pressure plates which is all fun and good but you know if you're looking for something a little bit more detailed uh, this is the video you're gonna wanna watch. Um, so first things first we're gonna go to power we're gonna go to logic gates and we're gonna find our XOR logic gate for our decontamination chamber that we're gonna build and this this gate is perfect for the decontamination chamber it's gonna give us the exact function we need in order for our our switches not to be flawed um, no matter which door you go in and out of however many times it there's no way to break the system it's this and that is due to this X or logic gate it's it's going to be perfect for what we need um, I already have a system set up over here with a couple of the pieces of the wall cut out to easily show you how this works but let's go through and you know first start off with the description of the XOR gate um, and it is transmits power if exactly one input has power so in this scenario our inputs are going to be our switches and the inputs will always be connected to the red terminal. Your output's going to be connected to the black. So if one input, even if we have two switches wired up, if one input has power, it will transmit power to the black output and that will control the devices that are connected to that output. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that because we actually don't need that. But uh, the first thing we're going to do is obviously build your structure, um, build your chamber, whatever you want to, you know, manufacture up here beforehand and uh, after that step you're gonna want to provide power um, and you know you can make it as neat or as messy as you want but I like to have some of my wiring you know out of the way so I'm not clipping through it as I'm running you know into the doors and stuff so um, I always find it best to just you know use these uh, power conduits to help guide your wiring but uh, live power feed always goes to the switch first so you take your live power feed you take it to the switch on this side. Then I have the live power feed coming around to this side and it is also going into the switch. The next thing that I'm using after the power is wired into the switch is I'm using the conduit junctions in combination with the wall pass through conduits. And these just allow your wiring to pass through the wall uh, without using any glitches and such. Um, do not get them confused with the power conduit that controls the power doors um, you know they obviously look very similar in a sense so please do not get those confused um, but those are a very useful tool so we have live power going to the switch switch then goes to the conduit junction and the wall pass through conduit then from the wall pass through conduit your switch is going to be wired into the red input and I, it's basically the same thing for the other side. So you're going to basically repeat the steps for this door and this door. So you're going to have your input from that switch running into the red input. And you're going to have your switch running into the red input on this side as well. Your black output is going to run to the power door conduit. This is the conduit, the junction that controls the the power to the door same thing on this side the wiring looks different but that's just because the conduits are in different locations um, to help keep the wiring neat uh, so then from the power conduit on the door you go to your decontamination arches you just wire them straight to a decontamination arch doesn't matter which one it is because all of your decontamination arches are going to be linked together uh, one of these wires is probably redundant in the sense that you know the system is always going to be you know connected 
via the logic gate. So, but I like to kind of make my wiring symmetrical and, you know, just in case, um, it never hurts to do. Also make sure that before you turn your switches on, your decontamination arch buttons are on. Uh, you may activate the system and the decontamination arches may not work, but you have to make sure all of the buttons are on. So make sure that they are pressed in. The system has no power yet because I have the switches off. Um, so basically the scenario we have going on here is both switches are off right now. So as you can see, they're both red, which means that there's no power flowing at all. So I'll go ahead and put one input on and the system opens up and the decontamination arches are now functional. So I will walk out the other side. I will close the door. Both inputs will be on now. The system shuts off. And just to verify, I will show you that right here. And even though I exited that way, I can still come back around. I'll shut this input off. It opens the system back up. So you can't break the system. No matter what you try to do, it'll always work. No matter what sequence you decide to choose. Uh, it's a very, very useful thing. Um, feel free to build on it more by using different logic gates. Uh, you could probably even use different logic gates in combination with this one as well. Um, the other fun thing that I'll show you to do really quick, uh, if you want to stick around, is how to make this completely automated. And to do that, just remove your switches. And go ahead over to your manufacturing inside of the power menu and go to conveyor belts. Now this may seem weird, but stick with me here. Uh, you're going to slide all the way to the right until you see the very far right laser tripwire switch. It's important that you use just the switch because this one is just going to toggle the power on and off. So what this is going to do is it's basically just going to act like the switch that we had earlier except it's it's just going to be functioning via um, proximity so when I trip the laser the system will just toggle on and off so really easy to use um, but this can make your system completely automated where you don't even have to actually press a button um, can be a little difficult to use in settlements where there may be a lot of heavy traffic or um, you may have followers because then you may actually get locked inside of your decontamination chamber um, but that's just a risk that you have to take if you're you know, not using it in a heavy populated settlement or you don't have followers that will accidentally trip you from getting stuck on the inside uh, you know use these because they are very nice uh, just be careful not to run over them too fast because they can sometimes not open but I'm going to go ahead and shut the system down and show you how this works and you'll get to see how this plays in with the rest of the uh, system here so basically we have our live power feed oh I forgot to wire this uh, this one up here and obviously make sure you wire it up just the same as you did the other switches these switches get live power these go into your uh, pass-through conduits that go into your red input okay so it's the same same thing you're just replacing the switches but you'll notice as I walk over this switch sorry it didn't trigger the system will open and sometimes the laser trip wires do not trigger, so just be prepared for that. There we go. Yeah, they're a little weird sometimes. You have to like walk over them kind of slow. Sometimes it's just all about positioning, but they will work the same way as your other systems do. So that's a nice little extra function if you don't want to have to. Um, you know press a button every time you come in and out of the doors but I like the the powered buttons better just because it gives you more of a solid function of the doors you don't have to walk too slow 
make sure that you hit the trip wire. Sometimes if you place the trip wire further back, it's better. Um, I've noticed that sometimes when it's too close to the door, uh, that's when it gives you the trouble of having to walk over it. But typically, if you just walk slow enough, you won't have any issues. But um, that's pretty much it. This is a very easy way to wire this up. Obviously, you know, I realized a, a real decontamination chamber, the doors would stay closed while it was decontaminating you. But honestly, you know, everything's so exposed to radiation out here. It's like, you know, it's, it's just mostly, you know, to help decontaminate you, you know, fully before you go into a settlement. It's not a big deal or anything. Um, but this is just one way to implement this. Obviously, I'm sure you could probably rig it up to where the doors stay closed, but I think this is probably the most convenient way and probably one of the coolest looking ways to get decontaminated uh, before you go into your settlement. I mean, that's pretty cool. There's six decontamination arches here. I mean, you're just walking through them. And, yeah, just, it's a lot better than getting sprayed for like half a second and then just thinking that all the rads are gone. For me, it just seems like it would be a little bit more realistic. Like this would be a more full way of getting decontaminated uh, from, you know, any contaminants that you might acquire out in the wasteland. But I'll show you how I implemented this into my settlement. So I will run up here and just show you how I kind of stuck it on the front of my entryway of my settlement. And you'll notice Take that I have the switches yourself, up here. So here's my decontamination chamber. It is completely boxed up. There's no openings, obviously. So I'll go ahead and open the switch and I walk through. And feel free to use as many or as few decontamination arches as you would like. But yeah, um, it's a pretty cool. Enough of this slog. Just point us to the nearest watering hole. Pretty cool little way to, uh, you know, spice up the entryway of your settlement and, you know. Spill it. Yeah. What? Just for me, it makes it a little bit more immersive uh, in the sense that, you know, you're getting actually, you know, cleaned up before you come in or, you know, as you go out, you know, one last little boost before you head out into the wasteland. So this has been a short tutorial. Hopefully it's helped you guys out. Hopefully it'll give you some information on uh, how to use those logic gates a little bit better and uh, keep building and stay safe out there, guys.